He was here charging the Freon, fixing the fuses. So hey, it's it's uh, it's a lot better than what it what has been lately. Um, my really okay. I, I really only just have two announcements really fast. But um, uh, first and foremost, tonight, it, I don't know if you would go. I don't know how many of you guys would go. But something that we do in the Church of God is um, every, whenever there's a fifth Sunday in a month, we use that as an opportunity to go around to other churches of God's. And uh, we, we hang out with them. We have a service, worship service. We have fellowship afterwards. And we have that tonight at Heartland Har- Harvest. What is it called? Heartland Family Men. Heartland Harvest Ministries. It used to be Harvest Temple. And uh, that's just over the viaduct, uh, essentially down in downtown Iowa. You can Google it. Um, but it's tonight at 6.30 if you guys want to go. I'm kind of talking to this crowd over here, I think, for the most part. Uh, Twyla. And uh, I heard there was a phenomenal preacher there tonight. So make sure you want to be a part of that. And uh, he looks very similar to me. So if you want to see that. Uh, I have, matter of fact, I, I have... My dad is the one who sets it up, and I never get the opportunity to speak. And in September, they're going to have another one. It's going to be here at Heritage, and I don't get to speak at that one. They try to mix it up a little bit. Um, but I'm going to speak tonight, and that's fun. I haven't done one of those in like 10 years, so this, this, will be, this will be a good time. Also, my kids, listen to me. Um, in July, at the end of July, there's youth camp, and I know several of you guys went last year. It's going to be for my juniors, and so I don't know what that age limit is, but I'm going to say it's something like 5 to 11 or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, okay, kindergarten to about 6 uh, and so on. Are you going to be there? Um, I know. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do that here in the end of July. Oh, he was about to go? Hey, I was here yesterday. I prayed over. It's it's ready. It would have worked. It would have worked. Listen, when he comes up, Jim, you come up with him. My goodness. My goodness. That kid. That's that's crazy calling. That was calling when he was growing up. But, hey, if you want your kids or if you want your grandkids to go to uh, camp this year, it's $125 a kid, plus you're going to want to give them some money for canteen. So I'm going to say like $135, $145, $150. Um, what, so what I always like to do is I know that can add up fast, and that adds up fast for me. So I've got $300 bucks into my kids going uh, because I think I get to go for free because I'm on the board and, and Ashley and I work it. But if you want your kids to go to camp, please sign them up to go to camp. I'll go ask other people to pay for your kids. I'll do that for you. I can't. The church can't. But we'll ask other people to pay for your kids. So if you want your kids, it's a uh, Thursday, Friday, come back Saturday. It's only a two-day thing. Uh, but it's uh, church. It's small groups. It's swimming. Uh, like there's a, like a 50-foot water slide into like a pond, which is a ton of fun. There's rock wall climbing. It's a lot of fun. So if you want your kids to go, uh, make sure you are part of that. So today is our baptism Sunday, and apparently June is the month for baptisms. I did not know that. Uh, we, like every church is having a baptism either last week or this week, and so are we, but it, I only planned it because it was the time that was open on the calendar to plan it. So, uh, but apparently June is a time for baptisms. I have a, um, a small little message that I'm going to share with you. I'm very excited about today because what this represents, because I'll be honest with you, I never knew what this was. I always thought in all of my life that this is what we do. If you're a Christian, you get baptized, and that's it. It's just what we do. It's just we sit on the front pew. We raise our hands and worship. We put dollar bills in the baskets. It's just what we do. But it's so much more than that. And matter of fact, over the last couple of days, I've been praying and talking to God like, dude, am I even worthy to be doing this? Am I? Who am I to be doing this? And uh, because as I begin to study and put my notes together, this is the real deal. This is something. And I know that many of you have, have not done this and you're not doing this now. But I want you to listen to what I have for you. And I don't know if we will do another one of these this year. I don't know how it works. Perhaps maybe as we get into to, to the winter months. But we will do this again next June. And if it's something that you need to do, I'll tell you this much. I'll tell you this much. And I'm going to talk about this here in a second. But in the Bible times, when people would 
immediately accept Jesus as their Savior, the minute they realize that they needed to repent from their wild behavior and accept Christ as their Savior, they went and got baptized immediately. There was no time to delay. And I'm going to preach that here in a minute. So let me just throw this out there just so you know that this exists. This is ours. My dad bought this years ago. I, I've been telling people back there where, where the drums are, that used to be a built-in baptistry. We loved playing in that as a kid, but we, they never filled it up. They never filled it up. But this is ours, and we just store it right down the road. Matter of fact, there's a couple floaty things in there. I cleaned it the best I could. Oh, hey. It's better than the lake. You just want to, you just don't, you don't want to be the last one that goes. I'm just telling you that. Which I think is Katrina. <laughs> so she, she's batting clean up. <laughs> but <laughs> it's clean water. That's, that's, that's Omaha water right there. Straight from the hose. And it's warm, as warm as a bath. But we store this just down the road. And so I just want you to know that if there's ever a time where you say, Brad, I just accepted the Lord as my Savior. I'm ready to do this. I want to be baptized. We will get it up here, or I'll take it to Lake Manawa. I'll take you wherever you want to go. I'll take it in the bathroom, and we'll do it because it's how it's supposed to be done. But today is going to be an incredible service, so let's get ready for this. Up on your feet. God, I love you, and I thank you for this day. My goodness, this is your day. This is a big day. We are, we are about to watch people die and be born again, to be raised back up, God, for your purpose and for your glory. Come on, let's go. Greatest day in history, death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty cross, the empty grave. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. Sing that with me, he's alive. He's alive. And oh, happy day, happy day. Oh, you wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. Joy, perfect peace. Earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. Oh, sing it out. Oh, he. my sin away. 
good to be back here with you guys. Would you take a second and say good morning to somebody? Anybody who missed me can come give me a hug. I'll take it.
So I don't want to stop worship. You may be seated. We're actually going to take our worship throughout the entire service. Our worship is going to, uh, we're going to do the uh, worship throughout the baptism. Um, so we kind of have to shorten up the beginning part. And this is just a brief moment that I want to give you guys an opportunity to continue to your worship with your tithe and your offering. And then we'll come back. We'll do a little bit more of uh, some worship. And then we'll get into the baptism service and we'll worship throughout the service. You may be saying, well, Brad, why are you stopping worship for offering? Our offering is a form of worship. Remember, worship derives from the word worthy, worth-ship. And when you take of your needed finances and you sow it into the kingdom of God, and I'm, I'm going to tell you about something here in a second. When you're doing that, you're saying, God, you're worthy of this and more. Fortunately and thankfully, God doesn't ask for everything. God promises everything, but he doesn't ask for everything. That's good right there. Write that down. God promised you a hundredfold blessing. God promises you to keep you. God promises to open up the floodgates of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that you cannot contain, but he does not ask of that of you. Lately, I've been talking with Ashley, and I've just been praying and, and meeting with my mentors, and, and I we're having some computer issues, and I'm going to talk about the tithely app here in a second. But I've been, my heart has been really torn lately because I don't want to do this. I don't want to come up here and, and, and try to fundraise. And I don't want to come up here and try to entice people to give. I've been talking with my mentors and I've been talking with God. I've been praying and fasting and said, you know what, God? If everybody would just do their part, we would never have a need. And what bothers me is this, to think that this church could ever be a church that's not fulfilling its purpose. Right now, our minds and our hearts are outward focused. We have dreams and aspirations to go outside these walls and to reach the lost and to reach the hopeless and feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty and clothe the naked. We have dreams of that, but unfortunately, our giving is very inward focused. We give just enough to make what happens inside work. That's it. There's not a surplus. I have been meeting with bankers and trying to figure out our finances to figure out where we go next and moving or renting. And so we've been looking at this. And I told the banker, the banker wants our financial statements. I said, well, I can give you that, but you're acting like there's a surplus. You're acting like we have operating capital. I said, what comes in is literally what goes out. And it breaks my heart because all I want, you guys, listen, all I want is this church to be what this church is supposed to be. I don't need your money. I don't want you to fatten our pockets. I, don't, I have a full-time paying job, and it pays me well. I don't need your 50 bucks a week. I don't need that. What I want, though, is I want this church to be able to go outside these walls and go find someone who's hungry and give them something to eat. What I want is go find someone that's hopeless and say, hey, let me give you some hope. What I want is to go find somebody that needs a hug and to hug them. I want to have some flow into what we do. So in our last song of worship, before we get into this, I want you to be generous with your giving. Not for me, but because we want this church to be a church that God desires and a church that fulfills the purpose of the church. The church is supposed to be an extension of Jesus. You are supposed to be an extension of Jesus. Right now, Jesus is inward focused. Right now, we're inward focused. We're not out there reaching the lost. That's not how Jesus was. That's not how Jesus was. I pray that you would ask God what God wants you to give this morning and give it. And we give here as we do. We give in the offering, and then it's not working right now. But many of us use the Tithely app. You can download the Tithely app. We can give that way. God, I pray that you will bless everybody that gives. God, you know my heart. You know what we want. God, it's not about fattening pockets. It's not about paying bills. It's not about getting wealthy. What it is about is being a church that you desire. It's about being an example church. It's about loving those that need to be loved and giving hope to the hopeless and feeding the hungry and giving clothes to the naked and giving the, the thirsty something to drink. God, we got to have some serve and some flow in what we do. I pray that you will bless the gift and bless the giver. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Please give, please give.
out here with you guys. Cameron, we get the offering baskets and take it back to Greg for me, please. So, something that we've not done ever before, as far as I know, is in the past when we would do baptisms, um, we would just show up, and if you want to be baptized, just kind of show up. And uh, again, not that that's wrong, but sometimes we get caught up in tradition and like legalism, and we don't know why we do what we do. We don't know why we do what we do. Why do you raise your hands? Why do you give in the offering? Why do you do that? And so why do we get baptized? And so I thought what would be nice would be we could get out there, and the day before we do this, we can kind of educate the kids and educate even the adults on why we do what we do. And I thought I would just take just a few moments, just a few moments to do the same thing for you. Um, in the Bible, in Mark, listen to the story. Kids, listen to the story. In the Bible, Jesus was baptized. Now, you got to realize that Jesus was baptized by a guy named John the Baptist. That's what he does. Brad the preacher, you know. And what was fascinating about John uh, the Baptist baptizing Jesus was the fact that John the, Bapt John the Baptist was baptizing people in a repentance message. He was saying, hey, the Lord is near. The Messiah is coming. If you don't know if you're going to die and go to heaven or hell, be baptized now. Repent. Turn from your ways. Acknowledge that what you're doing is not what you want to do anymore. Make a conscious decision to change it. Accept the Lord as your Savior and get into this water. And so that was the message that John the Baptist was baptizing people in. What's interesting about that is Jesus comes onto the scene and he gets baptized in that message. And so the onlookers look at Jesus and they say, well, listen, okay, how can this dude be the savior of men and free us from sin when he's coming in here and he's getting baptized as if he is a man of sin? That's not why Jesus did it. Jesus got baptized for two reasons. Number one, it's an example to us for what we're supposed to do. And number two, and this is super fascinating, and I love everything about this, and I was trying to send this message yesterday. The Bible said that when Jesus came up out of the water, because we believe in a full submersion baptism. The word baptized comes from the Greek word to be fully submerged, to go under the water. And so we believe that also it's what Jesus did, and so it's, I think it's what we should do. So the Bible says that when he was brought back out of the water, the skies parted. Another translation said the skies ripped open. And when it ripped open, the Holy Spirit descended and settled on Jesus. The Holy Spirit is power. The Holy Spirit is the enabler. I'm not saying that Jesus did not have the Holy Spirit before this moment. But what I'm saying is, is when Jesus came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit settled on him. I believe that's when Jesus became more powerful than he was prior to. When Jesus was baptized, he was 30 years old. We know that his ministry went from about 30 to 33. Many people believe that when Jesus came onto the scene, the very first public thing he did was he went and got baptized. And when he came up, the Holy Spirit descended on him, and, 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 the, and then the cloud spoke. A voice came from heaven, and God said to Jesus, You are my son. You're chosen. You're marked. You're chosen. You're marked. I believe young or old, and I'm going to ask these kids a question when they get in here. I believe young or old, that when you do this, God says from heaven, you, you are my son, you are my daughter, you have been chosen, you are marked. And the Bible says right after that happened, when Jesus came out, out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended on him. God spoke to him, and moments after that, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days. His ministry, his ministry became, or, or began right there in that moment. When you are being baptized, this is a declaration to all of us that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Colin came back to me just a minute ago, and he said, Dad, I'm getting baptized, right? And I said, well, I don't know, are you? He said, well, I said I wanted to, and I know he was in, actually taught the kids yesterday, and I taught the adults yesterday. And, uh, and I said, well, answer me this question. Why do you want to do it? And he just swelled, his, his, I can see his eyes watering up. And I, can, I know when he's about to cry. And, and he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I said, why do you want to do it? He said, I don't know. I said, why are you about to cry? He's like, I don't know, <laughs> you know. I don't know. I said, is he your savior? 
Is he your Lord? Yeah, you know. Do you want to live life without him? No, nope. you know. And do you want the world to know that? Yeah. I said, oh, okay, we can, we can get you baptized. This is a public display of your love and affection and that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. This right here, what's really cool is when, when we get baptized, we believe that this is burial and life. This is a representation of Christ's burial and the resurrection. We believe that when you go down, the old you is dying and the new year, the new year is coming up. The new year. The new you is coming up. So listen to me. Listen to me, young and old. When you go down, I said this yesterday, this, this does not make you immune to the things of the world. This does not make you bulletproof. You perhaps will have more trials and tribulations after than you will before. Because before you were never a threat, you were never concerned. All of a sudden, you made a public declaration of your faith and obedience and submission to God. Now all of a sudden, hell says, what the heck? Now, she was never a problem before, but now she's out there making a scene in front of everybody, claiming that Jesus is her Savior. That's exactly what happened to the Lord. He comes up out of the water, sent into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days. But that's the way it is. And I taught this yesterday. When you come up, this is a confidence builder. When, when life throws your way, you go home later on today, and he starts blowing up your phone. That guy starts texting you, right? The kids are driving you nuts. You're this close to losing your salvation. You can know something, that I've been baptized, and the old me is gone, and the new me is here. I don't have to live this way anymore. I don't have to think this way anymore. This is a confidence booster. What I love about this is the Word of God says, for we are all baptized by one spirit into one body. When you do this, you're joining this family. You're joining this family. You're becoming, and not only do I love that because, A, I love the fact that you're joining the heritage family. I love the fact that you're join, joining the body of Christ. But I also know that some of you don't have family like you wanted to have. Some of you wish you had a stronger family. Some of you wish you had a family that cared about you. I want you to understand that what you're about to do right now joins you to the family of God. And we've got you. And we've got you. I, I taught this yesterday. My group in a house where we said that nobody lives as to an island. No one lives by themselves. We are a family first and foremost. If you're struggling financially, we're here to help you out. If you're struggling emotionally, we're here to help you out. If you need help moving, replacing your brakes, cleaning your gutters, it's what we do. We're family. Chad sprays for bugs, and I'll have him come over and spray my house for ants, and then I'll say, how much do I owe you? And his response is, Hi, I'm Chad, your brother. You don't owe me anything. It's what we do. You are joining a family that you don't owe us anything. It's what we do. What do you need help? You need to be loved on? You need to be cared for? Is he asking? Is he telling me to pay him now? Is that what he's saying? You're joining a family. So who can be baptized? Who can be baptized? Listen to me. Everybody who has made the conscious decision to believe in Christ. In Acts, it says, those who accepted his message were baptized. Do you accept the message? You can be baptized. In Acts, it says, but when they believed, they were baptized. When you believe, you can be baptized. We believe in baptizing children as long as they are old enough to understand and make a personal declaration of belief. Lastly here, and we'll, we'll start when are we supposed to be baptized? Well, it's funny because we kind of do things a little bit different. We live in, you know, 2016. 2016. I'm living in the past. <laughs> we live in 2025. And so what happens is that we come to church and we, we get saved and then we wait for the next church to have a baptism. And they say, hey, put me down. I want, I want to be baptized. But the fact is, is the Word of God says this. The, uh, uh, the Word of God talks about how the minute you are baptized, and I'm going to read you a story. The minute that you accept Jesus as your Savior, go get baptized. Because, again, it's what kind of starts, it starts your journey. What, 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 what you're saying is, is the old me is dead. The new me is here. So let's go kill the old me. There's a story in the Bible where, where Philip, I think it was, Philip, there was, a, there was a man reading the scriptures, and Philip said, hey, do you know what you're reading? He says, no, not really. And so Philip said, well, let me translate what you're reading. And so right then and there, this man begins to read about 
the Lord and, 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 and his calling and his purpose. And, and he gets saved and they're traveling down a road when this happens. And the man says, look, there's some water over there. Should I not go get baptized? And Philip went and took him and got him baptized immediately. So when should we get baptized? The minute, the minute that you say, you know what? I repent. The old me is gone. The new me is here. Let's go, let's go kill the old me and let's start anew. I, yesterday, yesterday I was talking about, it's just grass. Again, it's, it's better than the lake. When you repent, what is repentance? Repentance is when you say, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I know sin is not my future. I know sin is the path to destruction. I don't want to do this no more. I'm remorseful of my behavior. I'm going to do all this in my power to turn from my ways. And then I accept Jesus as my Savior. Re repentance doesn't, again, make you bulletproof. There were a time, and there was a time in my life when I feel like as an adult, I repented. I said, God, I don't want to do that anymore, and I'm changing. And can I tell you something? That for probably for months or maybe years after, I still struggled with that same thing. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't mean that I didn't repent, because at that moment, I really did. I really, I really emotionally and consciously said, I don't want to do this anymore. My mind's made up. I don't want to do this now. And now is my journey to recover from this and stop doing this. And so it's, it's a series sometimes. It's a season sometimes. So just think, when you repent, some people want to be held up for, from repenting because they think, well, listen, I'm going to repent, but I know I'm going to fall again. It's okay. If your heart says, I don't want to do this no more. And if you are intentional about changing your ways, and if you realize that your decisions and your life choices are leading you in the wrong direction, and you're constantly saying, this is it, I've made up my mind, that's repentance. And then from that moment on, you need to work it out and live it out and, and, and make smart choices not to make those decisions again. Let's get ready to be baptized. Just take us into a song just for a little bit, would you?
This is Mickey. We love Mickey. We love all of you. Mickey's just our favorite. Yeah, out of all the Mickeys in my life, you're my favorite. Mickey, I don't want people to hear me talk. I want people to hear you talk for just a few moments. Don't preach or I'll take away the microphone. Mickey, tell us your story. Why is this significant? Why are you doing what you're doing? Well, I was baptized years ago when my children were young. And um, <laughs> followed the Lord. Love the Lord. All my life, but didn't go to church for a while. that anybody again in this church in this family is happenstance I was I've been doing my job at, at the paper for about 15 years and I, I worked with this this customer of mine never really made him face to face maybe one time but one day but but Mickey's been coming to ch church so faithfully she comes to our small groups and and one day I saw her post something on Facebook I said wait wait what is your who's your son and she said my son's named Bo I said I've known Bo for 15 years he's one of my customers I never knew he was your your son the picture that when you guys were at the Bethlehem house and making funny pictures, whatever, and made a, a snap, whatever, what a snap a sheet, snap a shot thing, whatever. Whatever those kids are doing, you kids, you look just like your son. <laughs> Thank you for being baptized today, Mickey. This is this is an honor and this is a privilege. Stop. 